Welcome to Historic Geneva's Johnston House. 200 years ago, this was the house of John and Margaret Johnston and their children. Mr. and Mrs. Johnston were immigrants, or people who moved to this country from another country. He and his wife were born and raised in Scotland. He came here from Scotland in 1821 to purchase a farm and build a house. He was neither rich nor poor, but he wanted a better life and wasn't able to buy property in Scotland, so he decided to move to the United States. He chose this property because he believed it had potential, even though the previous farmer had trouble growing crops. Mr. Johnston called his farm View Fields because of the view down to the lake and across the fields. He owned the land from this house up the road to Rose Hill Farm and from the lake across the fields behind the house. Mr. Johnston built this house in 1822. Then he sent for his wife and two small children who were still living in Scotland. Scotland is in Great Britain and on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Mrs. Johnston had to travel by sailing ship to get here. Ships took around a month to travel from Europe to North America in those days, and sometimes they sank in storms. You also had to carry not only all your own belongings, but enough food to last you through the entire trip. Mr. Johnston worked very hard to improve his farmland. In those days, most farmers raised grass and grain crops like corn to feed their animals, or wheat to sell to people in New York City. They probably had a large vegetable garden for the family's food. When Mr. Johnston bought the farm, he was excited about one thing that wouldn't excite most of us today about new property. It came with a gigantic pile of manure, or animal poop. He knew that manure would help his crops grow better, so one of the first things he did was to pay someone to help him spread it all over his fields. Then he made sure to keep spreading manure from his own animals every year to make the soil better for growing wheat and corn. He also used something called drain tile to improve how the water moved through the soil. These innovations, or new things that he tried, and his hard work paid off and he became a very successful farmer. Eventually, he became so well known for his methods of farming that people came to visit him from all over to learn about them. The Johnstons also raised animals. Since there were no tractors or trucks in those days, Mr. Johnston needed horses to pull his plow and wagons. He raised cattle for meat and cows for milk and butter. Although the house is the only building still here from the Johnstons' time, it is still in a very rural area. The houses are far apart and roads don't have a lot of traffic. There aren't any stores, churches, or schools close by. There are still lots of fields with crops like corn and grapes, and you can still smell the manure spread on local farms in the spring. When the Johnstons lived here, Geneva was just a village and much smaller than it is now. It was where the family went to church and to buy things they didn't produce on their farm. It is only about five minutes away today by car, but in the Johnston's time, the trip would have taken about 20 minutes or more by wagon or buggy, since the roads were just not as good in those days. So you can see that Mr. Johnston built his family a nice house, not a fancy house, but a very nice house. It has a lovely porch and side lights on either side of the door. Those were not really fancy, but they were kind of expensive. They let light into the inside of the house, so not everybody had them on their house. These ones are plain, but the fact that they're here means Mr. Johnston was thoughtful about what he was buying for his house and how he was building it. They have a nice porch. It would have been a wonderful place to sit on a day like today when it's very warm. Maybe they had a rocking chair here, and Mrs. Johnston sat and watched out across the fields as her husband came home from working out there or for her daughters to come back from school. So why don't we go inside and see what that looks like? The house has a central hallway with a staircase to the second floor. There are rooms on the north and the south side of the hall and a kitchen at the end of it. Looking at the inside of the house, you can see it is also nice, but not fancy. There are windows or side lights on either side of the door to let in more light. This was important because there was no electricity in the house when the Johnstons lived here. Unlike other homes in Geneva, 
The staircase is plain and the ceiling is low. The doorways are also plain and there is no carving or decoration in the hall. Through this doorway is the parlor, a space where the family would have entertained their guests. Again, this room is not fancy, but the Johnstons probably had some nicer things in here, especially as their farm became more profitable. They may have had a nice carpet on the floor, a china tea set, and books or musical instruments. When they were older, the Johnstons paid to have their portraits painted, which was very expensive. They would have heated the room with the fireplace and used oil lamps or candles for light. Mrs. Johnston and her daughters may have sewn or knitted here, written letters to family far away, or read the Bible. Mr. Johnston wrote letters to farm magazines, kept track of his farm business, and even knitted. Mr. and Mrs. Johnston had two children when they moved to New York, a boy named James and a girl named Elizabeth. After they came here, they had five more girls, Jessie, Nancy, Margaret, Hope, and Marion. Sadly, James became sick and died of disease when he was very young, so only the girls grew up here. Since he had so many daughters and he was very careful with his money, Mr. Johnston did not hire any servants while his girls were young because they could do the housework. Like most farm families, the Johnstons divided their work into jobs for men and jobs for women. Mr. Johnston was in charge of the farm and the sale of its products. Since he didn't have sons, he had to hire men to do the farm work, like plowing, planting, and harvesting. They also fixed tools and fences and took care of the animals. Most of the women's work was done in the house and garden. Mrs. Johnston and her daughters may have milked the cows and made butter or cheese. We know they took care of the geese and probably the vegetable garden. They had to preserve the meat they butchered and the fruits and vegetables they grew on the farm. So this is the Johnston's kitchen. It probably doesn't look much like the kitchens you're used to. They don't have any of the appliances or machinery that we have in our kitchens. No refrigerator, no oven, no stove, no microwave, no toaster or any other appliance for making things like coffee or waffles. They had to do pretty much everything with just simple tools, knives, forks, plates, spoons, things of that nature, and some specialized tools that we don't have anymore. Some of those are right here on the table, like the tools for making butter. They might have had a butter churn, and there were several styles of butter churns used, particularly on farms. Some were uh, the type with a dasher that goes up and down, such as we have over here. There were also rocking churns, like we have over here, where you would put the cream inside the churn, and when it rocked, it would agitate the cream and make butter. Once you had your butter made, you needed to separate out the buttermilk. So containers like this one, or basins, with paddles that were grooved would allow you to smooth and press the butter to help squeeze out that buttermilk. You didn't want the buttermilk in your butter because it would cause it to spoil. You'd add salt and that would help keep your butter fresh as long as it wasn't too hot and it didn't get too old. So most farm wives made butter very frequently. A lot of it they sold to other people in town who didn't have their own cow to make their butter. Mrs. Johnston probably did a lot of this work along with her six daughters because the work of women on a farm was usually here in the kitchen as well as in the garden. Mrs. Johnston might have made butter. She certainly would have cooked food for her family and her daughters would have helped with that as well. Since she didn't have the tools that we have today, she probably used something like this fireplace here, which was the Johnston's fireplace. Parts of it have been reconstructed because it was changed over the years, but you can see what they did for cooking. The Johnstons didn't have an oven or a stove like we do today. The cooking that they did was probably closer to what you do if you go camping today without a camp stove, if you cook over an open fire. This is the fireplace that the Johnstons had. 
they would have built the fire down at the bottom and there's these two metal pieces called andirons. They hold the logs up so that the air, the oxygen, can get underneath the fire and allow it to burn better. They could do a very strong fire. That would be good for boiling water in a kettle like we have here, or perhaps making a soup or boiling potatoes or carrots or other vegetables. They boiled a lot of their vegetables in those days. If you wanted to fry things or cook things more gently, you would take a few of the coals from the fireplace and put them underneath a pan, a trivet, uh, one of these different types of implements that would allow you to raise the uh, cast iron over the flames or over the fire, the coals, and cook something slowly. If you wanted to cook your pork chops or a steak, you might do it on one of the metal uh, implements that we have here. They also could even roast a chicken by hanging it from a string in front of the fire they would get the string and twist it up very tightly and the chicken would unroll on the string and then roll back up in the other direction and keep doing that and when it eventually slowed down you'd twist it up again and it was a way of keeping your chicken rotating just like the rotisserie ones at the grocery store today. Not only did the Johnstons not have a stovetop, they didn't have an oven the type we have. They had a bake oven though this one here is a reconstruction of the oven that the Johnstons had at this house. And you can see it's made out of bricks. And it's not very big, but there's enough room for you to be able to fit a few things in there to bake. But you're probably wondering, how do you bake something in bricks? Because there's no way to heat it up. There's no buttons and no electricity, no flames like you might see on a modern pizza oven. What you had to do is actually build the fire inside the bake oven. You wanted to build it up good and hot and let it burn for quite some time. Once it burned down, you would very carefully clear out the ashes and the coals that remained and the bricks would be really hot. If you've ever walked on the sidewalk or the asphalt in the hot summertime without your shoes on, you know how hot stone can get when it's exposed to heat. That's how this bake oven would work. The bricks would stay very, very hot, hot enough for you to bake cookies or a cake make a pot of beans or a loaf of bread was probably the most likely thing they were baking in their oven. They could have done several. The only thing was you had to know how quickly it cooled down because it would start out at a certain temperature and it would gradually drop. You didn't have a way to raise it back up again without starting all over. So you usually did your baking on one day and it was an all day affair and you changed what you were baking based on how hot the oven still was. You didn't use the thermometer. Some people who were experienced might put their hand in and get a sense of how hot it was. Other times, you could take some flour and sprinkle it on the bottom of the bricks. If the flour didn't turn brown, your oven isn't hot enough to bake. If it turns brown very quickly or black, it's too hot and you're going to have to wait a little while. So a cook would get experience to understand how hot the bake oven was and what she could cook in it. And that's very likely what Mrs. Johnston did and probably what she taught to all of her daughters, who we know also helped cook the meals. Back in the 1800s, they didn't have running water or toilets. So where did the Johnstons go to relieve themselves? Well, they went to the privy. We often call them outhouses today. And this is an example from one from the 1800s, though it wasn't here when the Johnstons lived here. They had one of their own. It's a small house and inside, which you might be able to see, are three holes with covers on them. The holes are over a bench and underneath the house itself is a deep pit. So all the waste would fall down into the pit. Eventually the pit gets filled up. You have to cover it over with earth and move the entire house someplace else near another pit. You usually wanted it not too far from the house. You don't want to have to go that far to go to the bathroom but you don't want it too close either because it does not smell good, especially in the summer's heat. It was one place where people could sometimes get away by themselves. Although this is what they call a three-holer, so more than one person could use it. With six kids, the Johnstons needed more than one bathroom, as we would say, and so this was what they had to use. Although they could have chamber pots in the house, uh, if they didn't have so much money, it would just be a pail called a slop pail that you'd use when you couldn't get outside because of the weather or if it was too dark or dangerous. But this is exactly what you had to do in those days when you really had to go.